All right. So I'm excited because uh, we were just chatting before hitting record and we're going to talk about some uh, ninja hacks. And I I'm, I'm really curious uh, just from our conversation that uh, Dr. Travis Ziegler and I were just having. So as we're heading into Q4, it's all about those ninja hacks to chop away your competition and uh, bring in more uh, revenue for your business and do it more profitably. So uh, Travis, thank you for coming on. Yeah, I'm excited to be here because as I shared before we started recording that some of these, most of these I have not shared publicly. And so it's, you guys are in for a special treat today because I have not shared this even with my YouTube channel or anything. Mm -hmm. This is the first time you're going to hear it. And some of these are working incredibly well, and I would recommend implementing all five. But of course, if you can't do that, implement just a few of them. Some of these only take an hour after you watch this presentation to implement mm -hmm. others take a little longer but um, it's going to be worth it. Trust me. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I got to see a little bit of uh, the preview of the notes as well. So uh, let, 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 let's get into it. So I'm, all right, I'm, I'm, let me I'm, share my screen. Yes. And uh, you always bring good stuff. So uh, I always get great comments from your presentation. So I'm excited for this. Well, well good, good. I, I am presenting today on the five Amazon PPC ninja hacks to accelerate your Q4 sales and that is our fellow ninja slash pineapple off to the side there. And he's, he's ready to get started. So just a brief introduction of who I am. I'm Dr. Travis Ziegler. I am an actual doctor. You can call me Travis when you meet me though, or see me in person. I don't have to go by doctor or anything. Um, my wife and I founded a company called I Love back in 2016 or 2015. And we actually just sold in June of 2021. And we're on pace to do about six to 7 million this year. We did about 4 million last year. And so we're using the strategies that I'm going to teach you today. And then what we do is whenever we discover something new, we, we try it out in iLove. And then if it works really well, we'll actually implement it across our agency as well. So I'm also the founder and CEO of the Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency, hence the pineapple theme. And we've helped hundreds with our strategies that we teach. And then we've also helped people in the agency and themselves by helping them with their ads. And I have an incredible passion for helping other entrepreneurs achieve the financial freedom that we've had with Amazon businesses and just e-commerce in general. And I believe my superpower to be audience building and Amazon PPC and creating content. And so that's kind of what we focus on with everything. So that's why I love doing things like this because I like to take big, broad strategies that you, you learn maybe at conferences and I like to dial it down to the tactical. So a lot of the stuff we're gonna be doing today, you're gonna be looking actually over my shoulder at my screen. It's not just gonna be a slideshow. I'm actually gonna be doing this in my account so we're going to go through the, the strategy briefly, and then we're actually going to dive right into it. So these are the five ninja hacks, hacks we're going to learn. So ninja hack number one, your ACOS goal is wrong. And if you guys join me in the spring for the PPC Summit, I actually did go over this briefly, but I'm going to dig into it a little bit more and talk to you about why your ACOS goal is wrong and what you should be targeting instead. And I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate all that. And then number kick number two is double your conversion rate overnight. This is one thing that can double your conversion rate literally overnight, leading to an improved organic ranking. This is one of my favorite strategies to implement right before a big event like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Prime Day, Christmas season. And so you'll want to implement this now to get ready for Black Friday because it works so well and it literally takes 30 seconds to set up. It takes no time at all, but it does take a little bit of thinking to, to actually like figure out how you want to do it. So roundhouse number three, the external traffic mega boost, how to use Amazon's newest bonus to accelerate your sales. Block number four is fill in the blanks. How doing less than five minutes of work can yield improved results. And I'm going to show you exactly how with that. And with the slideshows with block number four, we're actually going to be talking just how Am it's the Amazon definition of what we're going to be going over. And I'm going to show you how to, to fix that as well. And then swipe number five, you must protect this house. These are some new strategies that we're implementing right now, and it's working incredibly well. And it's actually, it's a pretty awesome strategy. So you're going to protect your listing in Q4 from your competitors. And it, it, yeah, it's just fun. I, I can't go too much into it. I, I'm going to go into it in a little bit. So I just get too excited about this stuff. And then I might have a little bonus hack if we have time. So let's jump into number one, chop number one, your ACOS goal is wrong. And so what we want to figure out here is what is your maximum cost per acquisition? And then once we figure that out, we're going to figure out your break-even ACOS and then your target ACOS. Now, this does take some math. And if you hate math, 
I have a spreadsheet for you that's a template. You can actually just copy that template and just plug in your numbers and it will calculate everything for you. So I'm gonna actually show you the math, but then you're gonna have a spreadsheet as well that's gonna help calculate that as well. So with ACOS, I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. With ACOS, you should be shooting for a break-even ACOS. And what that means is what you're spending on advertising should be a break-even. And so you're not profiting, you're not losing from, from, from advertising. And in some cases, when I set my target ACOS, I actually go 10 to 40% higher than break-even ACOS. So I actually lose money on my advertising sale. And the reason I do that is because I have consumables. And so I know my numbers. I know my lifetime value of my customer. And so if I know my lifetime value of my customer, then it's a no-brainer to take a loss on that first sale and the advertising sale to increase organic rank because I know they'll come back. And so most consumables have, if you have a good product, will have about a 20% repeat customer rate. And as that number goes up, you can spend even more to acquire that customer. And so we go after, or we have about a 48% repeat customer rate. And so that's why we're going after 40% above break-even ACOS. So we're losing money on those sales at the beginning because we, we can almost guarantee that they'll come back to buy more. And so that's kind of one of the big things. If you're in consumables, go over break-even. But if you're, you're not in consumables, then break-even is a good price to go after or a good, good ACOS to go after just because it's going to lead to more organic sales. And so just keep that in mind. I'm going to repeat it over and over and over again. So let's just jump into a couple slides and then we're going to jump into a live example after that. So the first thing you want to do is calculate your maximum cost per acquisition, which again is the maximum amount you want to pay to acquire a customer. And then this is also known as your profit. And it's simply your sales price minus your Amazon fees minus your cost of goods sold. So what is your product landed inside the Amazon warehouse? That's your cost of goods, your Amazon fees. I'm going to show you how to get that here in just a little bit. I use Helium 10's tool. There's a million tools out there, but I'm going to use Helium 10 in this example. And then of course you just plug your sale price in there as well. Once you calculate that, that's your profit. It's as simple as that. And so that's your ma maximum cost per acquisition. Selling price minus Amazon fees, minus cost of goods sold, also known as your profit. So hopefully most of you know how to calculate that because if you don't, you need to study profit <laughs> and just know your numbers period with an Amazon business or just any business in general. So after we do that, we're gonna calculate your break-even ACOS. And your break-even ACOS is just simply your profit margin. So then you're gonna take that maximum CPA and you're gonna divide it by your sales price. It's as simple as that. And that's your profit margin, which is also your break-even ACOS. And then determining your target ACOS is pretty much up to you. And so I talked about it. We go 10 to 40% above break-even because we're in the consumable space and we know our lifetime value of our customer and we know they're going to come back 48% of the time to repurchase from us. And those numbers could be even skewed more. Like maybe we have an even bigger repeat customer rate because some shoppers will shop on Amazon, then Shopify, Amazon, then Shopify. And so those numbers could be skewed as a result of people bouncing back and forth between channels. But we know for the most part that we have a $340 lifetime value and we have about a 48% repeat customer rate. And so that's why we go 40 percentage points above ACOS. Now we didn't start that way. Two years ago, we started at 10% above, but now that we're two years later and our lifetime value has increased, we can pay more to acquire a customer and they'll be back 48% of the time. Again, I'm going to repeat myself in this because it's so important to know your numbers, know your lifetime value, know your profit, know your profit margin, know what you need to be going after to really accelerate your business. I see people all the time bragging about 10% ACOSes and you could be leaving sales on the table as a result of that because you're not pushing hard enough. You're not going up in organic rank as a result of not getting as many sales. And so just keep that in mind as, as we're going through this. And so your action items for this is make a copy of this spreadsheet, calculate your break even and target ACOS, and then be aggressive. That's my be aggressive GIF right there. So right. be e aggressive. And so again, this spreadsheet, I'm going to show it here in just a little bit, is available at profitablepineapple.com forward slash bonus. I'm going to have everything that I mentioned here. And there's a couple spreadsheets that I have as templates. So profitablepineapple.com slash bonus, no lead magnet or anything. You just hop in there and it's literally presented right there. You can open it up in your Google Drive 
if you want to edit it yourself, you have to go to file and make a copy. And so I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So let's jump over to my screen. I'm going to close down the slideshow real quick and I'm going to show you this template. And so this is the template. It's got a couple other things in here. Um, it's just part of my training, but this is the one that we're actually going to be looking at right here. And it's very, very, very simple. Sales price, Amazon fees, cost of goods, everything else is calculated for you. And so let me just show you how this works with the Helium 10 tool. Like I said, you can pretty much use any tool that you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. And so I'm going to show you guys, oh no, I can't show you guys my sunglasses because they're suppressed right now, which is going to be tip number four, I think, is how to not get suppressed. <laughs> All right. So let's pull up one of our products and we'll pull up this one. All right. So this is our lid and lash cleanser. It's 1997. And so we're going to come into here and we're just going to put that sales price into here as 1997. And then you can put, you know, whatever the product is here and whatever other information, but I'm mainly focusing on this part right here. All right. So when we go to that page, I have the helium 10 tool activated right now. When you scroll down the page just a little bit, you'll see this calculator right here. And so you can go to revenue calculator. You can also get a more accurate picture by looking at your reports in Amazon, but this is just kind of a, a quick fix. So 697 is how much, or 647, excuse me, is my, are my Amazon fees. And let's just say this product is $5 to make. And so you can see right here, it actually calculates it for you, but I'm going to go plug it back into my spreadsheet because that calculates a few more numbers for me. So remember 647, we're going to come back over here. Amazon's fees is 647. And then our costs are $5. And so $8.50 is our profit or our maximum cost per acquisition. Our break-even ACOS is 43%. And for this product, we go actually after 83% ACOS. Why? Because it's a consumable, because we know that they'll be back 50% of the time or 48% of the time. And we know our lifetime value is 342. Now, if you are in, let's say you sell something that's not consumable, you might just want to go after break even. So your target will be 43%. This is your choice. There's no, there's no like, this is what you want to do with your business. If you want to focus on profitability, take your target egos down to 23%, because then you're going to get more profit. So I have some customers or clients in our agency that they'll, they just want profit. And so we actually do go after that 10 to 20% ACOs, even though we tell them that if we push a little bit more, you're going to get more sales, but in the long run, you'll be more profitable, but in the short term, you're going to need more cash. And so, but they're just like, no, I just want to focus on profit. So that's what we do. But then my own business, I'm in it for the long game. I know in three more years, we're going to sell and that's what we're going after. So we go after an 83% target ACOS because we're in customer acquisition mode. And so just keep that in mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. So how aggressive do you want to be? Um, there's a variety of factors. I know this is a big debate, you know, are you leaving money on the table or not? And I could definitely see, especially in a consumable space, how you'd want to go a little aggressive because if they buy now, there's a good chance they'll buy again later. But for those who aren't in uh, the consumable space, as you mentioned, you know, sometimes being a little bit aggressive, even just to break even could also help you with organic too. Exactly. Exactly. So the, the, yeah, and this is, a, it's a very simple concept, but you just have to think about your ACOs that you want to go after a little bit more. And mm -hmm. if you want to focus on profit versus customer acquisition. So pretty easy to do. If you want the spreadsheet again, it's going to be in the bonus section. Um, but once you get into the spreadsheet, go to file, make a copy, and that will take it over to your Google drive. And then you can do all the, the editing that you want in there. All right. Secret number one is done. Let's jump back into the slideshow. Mm -hmm. So this is kick number two, which is doubling your conversion rate overnight. So what if I told you, you could double your conversion rate overnight? I think most of you guys would say I'm probably full of it, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't think so either, but we saw it with some of our products. And there is a strategy that we like to do before every big sale event, or if we just need to push a product. If we need to push a product, we'll do this as well. So if we have too much stock or our sales numbers start to go down, we'll use this strategy to help out with that. So with Q4, we are now in Q4 with, Q with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Christmas season coming up. We are going to do this strategy from probably now until probably the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. 
on some of our products, not all of them, but just some of them we want to push. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we put on a massive coupon, not a coupon code, but a coupon. And you've probably seen coupons on Amazon. They're the little green banner that you see on the search bar. And I'm not talking about 20% or 30%. I'm talking about 50% or more. And they can only use it once on one product. That's the beautiful thing about this. They can't like stack it. You're not going to run out of inventory as a result of that. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this is let's say they, you put this coupon on now in the, the beginning of October and they come back to buy in November of the same product or something. And they won't see that coupon again because they, they can only use it once. You can choose to have them use it many times, but I recommend not doing that. And so you need a massive coupon of 50% or more to help with that. What this does is it increases your conversion rate, which as you guys know, with an increased conversion rate, you're going to have more organic rankings go up and then sales are going to go up. And so you may lose a little bit of money in the front end, but then you're going to go up in the rankings for when it's Q4 time. And so we love to do this right now until right before Black Friday, because it's going to push our organic rankings up. And then when those come around, what we do then is we take the 50% off coupon off, or we take the 50, yeah, 50% off coupon off the listing, and mm -hmm. then we'll put like a dollar on the listing. And so it still has that coupon, that green banner for search. But when Black Friday's hits, it still has that banner, it's only a dollar off. And so you're not, you're not taking it down quite as much. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's a, that, that's a way to get people's attention and um, 50, it doesn't even have to be 50%, but just something, you know, big and aggressive, right? Exactly. So big, aggressive coupon. We push PPC a little harder for that one to four weeks before Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. And then for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we turn off that 50% off coupon. And then we put on a smaller one to $2 coupon. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So let me just show you, you all how to use the coupon feature, because I'm not talking about promotional codes. I'm talking about coupons. I'm just going to show you how to make a coupon, and then that should help kind of clarify things. So let's jump over to my screen one more time. And we're going to come over here. So we're in Seller Central. Super simple to do this. Come down here to Advertising, Coupons. And then you can see all the ones we have running right now. But, ooh, you can create them in bulk now. That's new. But we usually just come in here, create a new coupon. You'll want to put your SKU in there. So let's use that same example that we had earlier. So take your ASIN. You're going to find it. Add to coupon. Then here's the ones that are going to be running this coupon. We're going to continue to the next step. Money off or percentage off. I like to do money off when I do smaller coupons, like a dollar or two. But when I do a big coupon, like 50% off, I feel like 50% off is more appealing than $10 off. And so that's just, that's just my own opinion. Um, but when we're in the smaller coupons, like 10 to 20% versus like a dollar to $2, that's actually been shown. And we've seen it in our, our ads as well, or our products as well, that actual dollar off is better than like a dollar off versus 10% off is better. Hmm. So the budget's kind of arbitrary, but I just put like a hundred thousand. I never <laughs> Some want people this might to... be panicking looking at that budget. <laughs> I never want this to run out. That's the that's the key thing is right. I want it to keep going. And so, no, allow my coupon to be re redeemed multiple times by the same customer. You want to switch that. So yes, limit redemption to one per customer. That way they only see it once, and they they can only use it once. So then we're gonna hit continue. So you can schedule this. So I like to use keywords in this. And so like whatever your best keywords are, put them in here. So save 50% on the hydrate eyelid and eyelash cleanser. And so if you have great keywords that you want to use, say save 50% on your brand name with some good keywords. Because I think, mm. I don't know if it helps with keyword rankings. That's just what I do. You want to target all customers. You don't just want it to be prime members or students or family members. You want it to be all customers because that way people see it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Start date whenever you want to start it. So if you want to do run it in just November, we can do November 1st until Black Friday, which is 29th. This is Thanksgiving, which shopping tends to start ramping up a little bit mm -hmm. then. So I like to do it on the Wednesday before. And so we'll stop it. Oh, can't do that. Got to go to actual November. There we go. 
So November 24th, which is the day before Thanksgiving, we're going to run this. And then you're going to hit continue to next step. You're going to review everything, make sure it looks correct. And then just hit submit. I'm not going to submit this because we've already submitted all of ours for the day or for, for the season. But mm -hmm. that's a good way to increase conversion rate and double it now. And then increase conversion rate increases your organic rankings, which increases your sales. It's that simple. People ask me all the time, how do I increase my organic ranking? And it's very simple. Conversion rate and sales. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you have to focus on. Because Amazon wants to show its customers great converting products. They don't want to show a product that's getting a 1% conversion rate when your competitor is getting a 45% conversion rate. Because which one's going to convert the customer? The 45% conversion rate. Amazon wants to convert. They want to convert more than you want to convert. Because their goal is to keep customers on the platform buying as much as possible. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking about how to increase your organic ranks. Think about what Amazon wants, not what you want, what Amazon wants. They want a good converting product, which will then increase your organic rank, which will then increase your sales. So just keep that in mind. All right, we'll come back to this. Any questions on hack number two or good to go on? No, I like that. So the, uh, the concept of using a coupon code to help get more people in and, you know, we're recording this, it's early October. So the more we can do now to drive sales and show conversions, I think the better off it will be for Q4, especially for folks that don't have products with history. I tend to find, I have some very giftable products that tend to do really well in Q4, but the ones that haven't had kind of their chance on Q4 really need to get a little bit of spike. So I like that strategy. All right, so I have to switch cameras. So if you guys see me and I just changed positions. I was about to say, you got really small all of a sudden. Yeah, this one's the beefy one. This one's the beefy one. So I had to, my, my nice HD camera's in the middle of my screen. So I had to oh, like, gotcha. get it out of the way for this one. So, all right, so this one, Amazon loves external traffic and they love it so much now that they're, they just announced a 10% bonus as a result for sending external traffic that converts. And as you guys have known, Amazon is the biggest affiliate program in the world, but now they're actually starting to reward sellers with something new. And when you send them traffic from Google, from Facebook, from Pinterest, from anything external, from your email list, anything, they reward you for it because Amazon loves, loves external traffic. And Wait, with help, help me. Even, what, what is this announcement? I don't know that I've seen it. You have not seen the brand referral bonus by Amazon? No, I need to pay closer attention. So, oh boy. All right. I, so I you totally missed the boat on this one. So people could be laughing at me as they're watching, but I'm, I'm very curious to see it. <laughs> no, that's okay. So the brand referral bonus by Amazon. And, and if you haven't heard of this, I'm sure people that are on the summit have not heard of this as well. Mm -hmm. so this is exactly from Amazon. Let me, let me just read their exact definition of this. Delight customers while improving marketing efficiency and earn a bonus. Now you can start earning a bonus of 10% on the product sales driven by your non-Amazon marketing efforts. The more traffic you bring, the more opportunities you have to earn a bonus. The bonus is provided as a credit on your referral fees. And so if you refer $1,000 of revenue on your product, mm -hmm. Amazon's going to pay you $100 back. And so it's a pretty cool program. I used to do this with Amazon Associates. So that's their affiliate program. And it used to pay 4%. Now it's down to 2% since COVID. Mm. And so we, we made about $4,000 a month on that. And that was at 4%. And then it went down to 2%. But this is 10%. This is like two and a half times. This is 250% bigger than Amazon's affiliate program was at its peak. Right. And so I'm pumped with this program and we're just getting started with this, but we've been using Amazon associates. And now we're just switching out all those links to, um, uh, to brand referral bonuses just because it's 10%. Yeah. So how does it work? It's super simple. You generate an Amazon attribution tag. You add the tag to whatever campaign you're running again, anywhere, Google, Facebook, email, Pinterest, TikTok, wherever you drive external traffic, add one of these links in there and you'll get 10% back. And then you receive a bonus. It's literally that simple. And 
there's they have a lot of frequently asked questions on that, that page, and I'm going to show you that page here in just a little bit. But I do want you to note one thing is your ACOS might be higher for these, but then you also have to remember that you're getting a 10% bonus back. And Amazon loves and rewards external traffic with increased organic rankings. External traffic is how I built my business on Amazon. And mm -hmm. we talked before the show started that now that we, we, we sold for the first time in June and we're selling again in two and a half years, weird structure for our contract, but that's how we wanted it. <laughs> and we've had to take away a lot of our external traffic as a result of the sale, but we're trying to figure out new ways to do it. And so one of the new ways is what I'm going to show you guys today. And so the action items for this, and I'm going to show you this, is download your search term report and sort it by most sales. I'm not going to show you how to do search term report organization because I've done that many times. And if you go back to your PPC summit in the spring, I don't know if you can still get the replay. I actually show, show you guys how to do that there. Um, you make your attribution links. And then I like to make, I like to grab about five to 10 single keywords or excuse me, five to 10 search terms and make single keyword ad campaigns inside Google with the attribution link. And then we also do this for you as well. Um, this is something that our agency does. And we can help you with that. So you can always check it out there. But I'm going to show you again at the bonus section, I have search term organization and you're going to see the template for the worksheet that I use for this tracking. So let me jump over to my screen again and I'll show you all about this. All right. So when you're in your seller central, come over here, come to brand brands and then brand referral bonus. Now something to note, you do need to be brand registered for this. If you're not brand registered, then you will not see this because you won't, you actually probably won't even see this tab of brands. So you click brand referral bonus, and this will tell you all about it. You do have to resubmit tax information, um, but that's easy to do. And this tells you how it works. This is that statement I read to you earlier. And then if you have frequently asked questions are down here, and then you might, not, it might not look like this. Um, it might say begin, ref, begin generating tags or something like that. If you've never done it. Mm -hmm. um, now my attribution, when I click this, this looks a lot different than what you all will have. We were actually beta with this. And so we've had it for about probably a year to year and a half. Whereas in like, they just released it probably within the last three months. And so yours will look a lot different because I was in one of my client's accounts and it looked completely different than this. And so this is what mine looks like, but just know they actually, what they did with the, the new setup is they made it look more like um, Seller Central's campaign manager. So it looks like you're actually in campaign manager. Mine is more like vendor. And so mm. this is what vendors will look like. So you'll have your advertiser and it gives you the exact steps right here. Very simple to do. You do have to enroll. That's one thing to keep in mind. You do have to enroll to get your bonus. I'm gonna actually close that. So I'm gonna click on the advertiser. And then this is what it looks like. So you can see how many campaigns we have running. Um, the last 30 days we've generated, uh, I guess it doesn't add it up for you, but you can see all the sales we've generated from this strategy. I was telling you before, we're spending about 5,000 a month for this strategy, um, but we're trying to amp that up to 25,000 by Q1 of next year. And so within the next three months, we're trying to ramp it up pretty quickly because it's, it's working so incredibly well. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to download our search term report, which I've already done, and you can sort it however you want to. But what I did is I sorted it by sales. And so my top sales terms are at the top, all the way down to my bottom sales terms. And what I like to do is try to find five to 10 that are very similar. And so eyelid wipes, eyelid scrub, eyelid wipes right there, tea tree wipes, eye wipes, See, there's a couple more different ones. Um, that's a competitor. So there's about, that's a good amount. I'm just gonna color these blue. I'm gonna copy those. So those are my five to 10 search terms that I'm gonna be using for this strategy. Um, I have a little, let's head over here to Google. So here's my Google campaign. And what we're gonna do is just create a new campaign and we're going to optimize for sales and this you can you can play with this optimize it for website traffic if you're just trying to get more traffic to your listing 
sales because it's going to show to more people that want sales. Um, we're going to do a search campaign. So a search campaign is when somebody's on Google and they search for a word. That's what you're going to show up for. Display is shown all over the internet. Lots of impressions, lower click-through rate. Shopping ads, you've probably seen those. Um, videos is YouTube. And I have not really played with these, so I don't know much about those two. But they, it's kind of their AI software that is these two campaigns. So I still work on search because I like these to be very manual. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to hit continue. We can ignore that one. And so I'm just going to call this one O2 Google ads. And then I'm going to put eyelid wipes, just the product that we're going after. Amazon attribution, name it, whatever you want. I turn off these two. I don't find them to be as advantageous and you'll spend a lot more. And I just want to show up on Google. And so if you show up on their search network, they have lots of partners like Yahoo, Bing, not Bing, but Yahoo and other search engines that they'll show on as well. I find Google to be one of the best. Locations, only the territory that you're advertising for. So if you're just doing the UK, just do UK. If you're just doing Germany, just do Germany. Languages, you can leave that alone. Audio segments, you can leave that alone. I like to start at about a $25 a day budget because I'm a little more aggressive. But if you don't want to be as aggressive, start at $5. That's all you need. All right. And then what do you want to focus on? We're actually going to make this manual. And so you want to come down here to this little blue link right here. Click that. Of course, it's not recommended. And then you're going to select your, your bid strategy, which is manual. And they really don't like it when you do this. And then I unclick increase conversions with enhanced CPC. What this does is it gives you the most control to do, the, to, to do your bidding. And that's what I like to do. Because with Google, they have great AI software for all this. The problem is this isn't a typical campaign that you're setting up. Their pixel is not on your Amazon product listing. And so you want to be manually tracking this. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. All right. So these are just site links. You don't have to worry about that, but you can. Um, site links are just when you have an ad, you'll have your main ad and then you'll have all these site links below it. And you can kind of add more to that. So you could add other Amazon products in there as well. I haven't done that yet, but it's something that we do. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start out at one cent. We're going to come down here and just paste all those keywords. And then you can see at one cent, we're not going to get any clicks per day. And then we just kind of go up and down to find the most amount of clicks we're going to get for our daily budget. And then you can always change your daily budget down here too. So if we went all the way up to a dollar, what would it do? We'd get 41 clicks per day at an average cost per click of 60 cents. You're paying 60 cents to get somebody from Google searching for the search terms that you put in all around your product, eyelid wipes, eyelid scrubs, eyelid wipes, eye wipes, your competitor, your brand name. I'm just going to put one more in here. That's my brand name, just without anything else. Um, eye cleaning wipes, tea tree eyelid wipes, tea tree oil wipes. So everything is around those search terms. And we're going to get 41 clicks a day. So somebody that's typing that in is probably a pretty warm person that is looking to buy something like that. And then we're trying to get them over to Amazon to buy. So we'll get 41 clicks to our listing per day as a result of that. That's 41 people going from Google to Amazon, external traffic that Amazon loves. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna play with this a little bit more because even though 41 clicks sounds great and 61 cents per click is great, let's see if we can go a little lower and get more clicks. So you can see that we went down to 50 cents. We're only getting 18 cents per day. Let's go up to 75. There's 31. Let's go to 85, 35. So I think $1 might be our winner. Yeah, and that pretty much spends the budget. That's that's the goal, is you want to spend yeah. the budget. But you want to get the most clicks out of that budget. And so, yeah, uh, dollar, dollar looks like it's it. So you mm -hmm. just kind of play up and down with your default bid. And you're not always going to spend a dollar on a click, but that's that's the goal. And you th think about this. On Amazon, I'm paying five bucks a click for those keywords. I think you saw some of them. Um, let's see, CPC. Now that one's 76 cents because it's brand. $5 a click, four seventy eight a click. That's a brand mm. one. That's a brand, 489 a click. 
So you can see we're spending a lot, 335 against our competitor. Our competitor is cheaper than our general search terms, mm -hmm. 423, 291, 324. And so on Google, I'm spending 61 cents. And yes, on Amazon, they're, they're looking to buy when they type in that keyword. But so the same, same thing with Google. If they're typing those words in, they're probably looking to buy. And so I'm happy to spend 61 cents a click. It's going to be great. Yeah. So we're going to come down here and hit save and continue. And we're just going to write a little bit of ad copy. So the best way to do this is if you can make the ad copy as specific as possible towards that search term, they're going to be more likely to click. And so let's go back to these search terms and look at the ones that have the most impressions. And so you can see that's 8,000 right here for eyelid wipes, eyelid scrub, 20,000 impressions. And so we may want to go around that eyelid scrub category. So 20,000. Um, but I'm going to do eyelid wipes because we're more of an eyelid wipe. And so what we'll do, and these are tea tree wipes. So we'll, we'll type in Mediviz tea tree eyelid wipes. Save on Amazon. I can't, you can't say Amazon. I think we have a $5 off coupon for these. Let me just double check that. So yeah, you can see that nice green $5 off banner. Mm. So save $5 today. Shop on Amazon. So you can't say Amazon, but... Oh, yeah. is that an Amazon rule or is that a Google rule? It's a trademark rule. So you can't put trademark terms into uh, Google ads unless you own the trademark. Save $5 today it. on Mediviz Tea Tree eyelid wipes. Um, and then you can see other things here, eye cleaning wipes, tea tree oil wipes. So you can keep writing descriptions and headlines. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put this one, pin it at the top because I want that one to always be number one. And then probably this one, number two. And then that should be good. I, I, I don't like to put a lot. And then in the description, we're just going to put save $5.00. Now on Mediviz, tea tree eyelid wipes on Amazon. Extend it out a little bit more. Just take out the vowels. That usually seems to work pretty well. Okay. Eye cleansing wipes. Say limited sale or something. Like it's, it's so funny. Like I, I always think of like the best marketing copy that I can make for these ads uh -huh. always converts the worst. And when I just make it simple and just the search terms, mm. like it, it's crazy how much, how many more clicks we get. Okay. We've had click through rates up to 14% on some of these ads. Oh, and wow. On Google, a good click through rates, like one to 3%. Yeah. That's why the more you can individualize your ads, single keyword ad campaigns. So as few keywords as possible in the ad itself. Don't just keyword stuff it. Mm -hmm. And if you make it, you're going to get a higher click through rate, which means Google is going to serve you more. But if you keyword stuff and show for everything, you're going to have a low click through rate and Google's going to stop serving you. Mm. And so really make sure that you're pinpointing it down. So like I would even make a specific one, like lid scrubs for eyes. And that would be the headline lid scrubs for eyes save now on Amazon, something like that. And it will get a, such a high click-through rate that on Google, that Google will then be forced to show your ads more and more and more. Got it. So we're going to hit save and continue. It's going to redo the analysis and show you your clicks again. Uh, of course, I have an error on mine. Oh, yeah. You have to do the link. The link <laughs> I got to know where to go. <laughs> so let me show you how to make that link. So we have our product right here. I'm going to grab this link. This is just your Amazon link. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back to the attribution, which is kind of the point of this whole video or this, mm -hmm. this hack. And we're going to click new order. So we're back in the Amazon attribution screen. We're going to click new order. I am going to name it the same as what I did on Google. So I'm going to pick those products. We're going to add them all. So a lot of people will just pick their product that they're advertising for. I like to pick them all because I like to get bonuses on everything they buy from me. So they may buy more than just 
the product that you're advertising for. And so if you can, add everything you have, add it all. Because you're picking this specific link, they're gonna show up on this page. But if they buy any of your products, because your product might be here, your product might be down here. Like these are all my products. Uh -huh. This is my product. This is, this is, this is, this is hack number five, by the way. And this is, this is, this is, this is, these are all my products. So I don't care what they buy. I want that brand referral bonus. So I'm putting every single product of mine into this. Okay. And the reason is, is just because we're sending them to the specific product that we want them to buy. But if they buy any of our other products, we still get a bonus for it. Got so it. So you're basically saying to Amazon, even though they're clicking here, I want to get attribution for any of these, which is kind of a little workaround to get the 10%. So if they ended up clicking on one of your other products and buying it, you still get the 10%. Exactly. You got it. Ah, that's a good idea. All right. So we're going to just name it. I like to name it the exact same as what I did in Google. Easier to track. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to line items. So let me go back and grab this link. Come back over here. So line item name is going to be uh, Google search to Mediviz. I have no rhyme or reason to my nomenclature yet. I don't know okay. how I'm naming them yet. It's just, we're just doing it. So I'm, I just try to keep most of it the same. Uh, select publisher, you can type in Google, AdWords, search, enter your URL right there. Mm -hmm. You're going to hit create. And this will create the attribution link for you. It takes like usually about 10 seconds or so. And then right here, this is your attribution link. This is the link that you want. So we're going to copy that. Now we're going to put it in our Google ads campaign. This is just the display path. It will show amazon.com forward slash eyelid wipes. You can see it right there. And then that's what our ad will look like. So that is key. You know, having that attribution link right there. We'll scroll back down and hit save and continue. It will again do that analysis again, tell you approximately how many clicks you're going to get. 41 daily clicks, still about the same. Sometimes that changes. 10 keywords, um, like I said, five to 10 max. So you can really customize that ad. Then you hit publish and it's running. So then to track this, you do have to kind of manually track this. Um, I recommend doing it weekly, if not every other week. Um, so we, I have one of my team, teammates track it every two weeks. Another one tracks it every week. Um, why? I don't know. That's just what we do. It's, it, it, there's a, I just like to track it that way. So this is what our tracking sheet looks like. This is actually the template that again, you guys can get. So go to file, make a copy, copy this over. And what you do is you put in your Google ad spend. And let's say we made a hundred dollars that will automatically calculate your brand referral bonus. And it will give you your ROAS right here. So your ROAS is just simply your brand referral bonus plus your revenue over your Google ad spend. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't put ACOS in here because I want you to think of it more of it in a ROAS term. So return on your ad spend. So every dollar you're putting in, you're getting $2.20 back out, which is pretty awesome. And then if you want to know ACOS, it's just one divided by that number. So this is probably around a 46% ACOS. We can calculate that real quick. 45.4% ACOS. Nice math on the fly. <laughs> it's from looking at ROAS and ACOS my last six years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, very simple. You guys can have a copy of the spreadsheet. Again, go to file, make a copy. And you only have to fill in these two things. So when you go to back to Google Ads to track it, you're going to go find your campaign. So there's the campaign. We'll go to last week. Of course, it shows no spend. So last week, zero spend. And then when you come back in here, this is Google Attribution. You can come back into here. And you can look at last week. And it will give you all the data. So you'll want to put product sales in there. So this is the number you'll want to put in there. Mm -hmm. So 324. And I spent 20 bucks. Really good at re returning your ad spend. So this is your product sales, which will go in right here. Mm -hmm. Revenue from Amazon attribution. Your Google spend is right here. And that will go in right here. Pretty simple. And trust me, it's worth it to track it. You don't have to track it daily, but let it run for a week. The nice thing about manual mm -hmm. tracking is you don't check it every day. You check it once a week. 
Mm. I see so, so many people on Amazon PPC that like check it every day and they're pausing and changing things every single day when you should let things run for mm. a week at a time to let the data accumulate, to let attribution catch up because Amazon's attribution can take 14 to 30 days to catch up. And what we're starting to see now is some products, it takes up to seven clicks just to get a sale. And mm. so really having that, that spread of advertising spread out. And so you're, you're, you don't want to stop advertising too soon. So does this all make sense? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So that's, that's good stuff that you could implement fairly quickly. That was a very good rundown of how to uh, set up in Amazon and how to set it up in Google. So yeah, that's Super something that somebody can implement right away. Yeah. You do not need to be a wizard in Google. I have no idea how to run Google ads, but I know how to run this mm. and it's not hard to do. This is all we've been doing. We've been doing a similar form of this since 2017 before the brand referral bonus came out. We actually used to use Amazon affiliate links. Like I talked about earlier mm -hmm. and they only paid 4%. And then when COVID hit, they dropped it down to 2%. And so 10% is awesome. <laughs> yeah, is that's, that's amazing. And we used to have to manually track this even more than what we do now. So it's, it's been a great program. Highly recommend using it. So let me close all these because we don't need these anymore. And we're going to jump back over to our slideshow. All right. So just a, a quick recap of what we've gone over. I want you to rethink your target ACOS depending on how your product is, depending on how many repeat buyers you get. But your break-even ACOS is your profit margin. Go up and down from there, depending if you want to focus on profit or customer acquisition. Number two, have a large coupon to double your conversion rate and organic rankings. Do this before big events, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas season, Prime Day, all of those if your, your season's coming up. So we have sunglasses. So we'll run a big coupon. We have a 50% off coupon on all our sunglasses right now. And we'll run that until probably March, just because we're just trying to get sales and everybody else is backing off. We're pushing forward. Mm. And then finally, start your first Google campaign with an attribution link. Don't think you have to do 50 million of them. I mean, I'm going to do about 50 million this week, but it's something <laughs> that you can start to expand on and make a goal to do one new one per week. The first one may not work. The second one may not work. You may make 10 and only one works, but that's the one that will take you to the next level. And if you just do one per week and just keep going, then I would say 70% might not work, 30% will. And that's how you scale advertising. That's how you scale anything in business. Every 10 things that you try, 70 to 80% of them are not gonna work. But that 20 to 30% that does, that's what really takes off your business. So just keep that in mind with advertising as well. Love it. All right, block number four. We're selling the ninja theme. So this is your block because we, <laughs> we need to, to fill in the blanks with this one. And this is all about your listing quality dashboard. Do you know anything about this? I've played around in it a little bit, but not as much as I should. I, okay, so, uh, that's one of the reasons I host these events so I can learn <laughs> these things too. So your listing quality dashboard identifies and it helps you fix listing issues that affect discoverability, detail page experience, and customer returns. So it helps with all of that. So again, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna go through the Amazon definition and then I'm gonna show it to you as well. So this is improving discoverability. You guys have probably seen all those tabs off to the side of your desktop version. And I think there's a, a filter that you can use on mobile, not use as much on mobile. But if you want to have your product show when people are selecting these filters, you have to have all the backend stuff filled out. And if you don't, you're going to pay the price for it. So you're going to improve discoverability when you fill out everything in the listing quality dashboard. You're also going to improve or enable your product overview experience. So you can see the color material, fabric type and brand that's highlighted down there. That is what filling in the back end will do for you. I'm gonna show you one of our products that the bullets are gone. And that's the only thing that shows. It blew my mind. I was like, where's our bullets? And like, they're just gone. And it, this took the place of it. And so are we gonna see that across the board? I have no idea. 
And that so then you can crazy. also see, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That they would remove bullets, but I think know. it's a standardization for Amazon to make it more standard because people abuse bullets so much. So when I just take <laughs> yes. it out, <laughs> exactly. And so this is another search part that it's actually going to show up in search as well. And then price per unit attribute. And so showing your price per unit, and that can sometimes make your bigger packs or your variations look cheaper. And so that will make people buy those variations that you actually make more profit on. And so I'll show you an example of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then my favorite, this is my products that are, have been search suppressed for a month and a half because I did not follow the listing quality dashboard and we cannot fix it. So it's a big glitch in Amazon right now. So don't get this glitch on your products. Um, but if you don't take action on some of these things, Amazon will actually suppress your search. And that means that they're still available for sale, but they can't be found. So we've had about 12 products suspended or suppressed since who knows when. Um, I think it was August, end of August that we got them suppressed. And now it's the beginning of October. And so it's, it's a very sad day. We've had a lot of impact on sales as a result of this. So action items. <laughs> this one takes only one to two hours. Not even, depending on how many SKUs you have. If you have one SKU, this will take you five minutes. But it took us about one to two hours to go through all of it and fix all the blanks in your listing quality dashboard. So let me show you this real quick. And then... Um, yeah, this is super simple, so it won't take long at all. And of course, we don't have any because we, we, we do it. So you come up here, hit the settings button, go to inventory, and then come right here to improve listing quality. And then you can, you can see how many there are. Improve listing quality. There it says four, but of course, none are showing up right now. Review at risk listings. This is amazing. This means that we might get our sunglasses back because usually they show up here. Ah, that's, hopefully that's a good sign. Well, that's a good sign. So we, we keep on top of this. So I can't really give you a great example and show you how to do this. But what happens is that the product shows up right here, shows you page views, available inventory, your sales, and then your recommendations will be right here. Now they'll usually have like two recommendations per product, but then there will be a little tiny thing that says view all blank recommendations. So it may say view mm. all 15 recommendations click that and it will pull up all 15 things that you need to fill out. And there's also a little tab over here that will say, this isn't applicable to my item. And so if it's not, you can just click that and it will take it out. It's super simple to do. So it can be size, var size variations, colors, all that stuff will be in here. Mm -hmm. So make sure you go to manage inventory or inventory, improve listing quality, and just look at this. So I'm actually happy to see that we have none. That means my team's doing their job. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, super simple to do. Make sure you get that done. All right. And this is one of my favorite ones that we just started implementing as well. So this is swipe number five. You must protect this house. And I can't emphasize that enough. Q4 is here. And there is a ton of real estate on Amazon product pages. And your competition can advertise all over your listing. And that's, of course, what you don't want. So to protect your house you want to do certain types of advertising to make sure your products show up and nobody else's does. But what if you don't have high enough margins to protect your listing? So let's say you have a product that only makes, you know, a couple bucks in margin, $10. How are you going to protect your listing? Because your competitors bidding 20 bucks. Well, this is the fun part. If you have only one to two products, you make a simple variation for your product. And then we make sponsored product or sponsored display ads that are product targeting ads. That's the key thing. So product targeting ads, you can run those both in sponsored products and in sponsored display. So you'll want to do it in both of them. But the key thing here is you make a variation of your, your listing and you make it a three pack, a six pack, or a 12 pack. Because that three pack, six pack, and 12 pack, you're going to have a higher profit margin. With that higher profit margin, you can bid a lot higher. So you guys saw it a little earlier in this presentation, not on purpose, that was actually by accident, but I'm gonna show you that again here in just a little bit. Since these will have a higher profit margin, I bid 15 to $25 per click to keep my competitors off because if they're gonna buy my product, 
and then they see this in the advertising section and they click it, my six pack is going to make six times the profit margin versus my one pack, which makes the small profit margin. I can't really spend that 15 to $25 per click. This is something I've never shared publicly. And it's something that we've been doing for a little while now. We just, we just never, never shared it. And so this is an easy action item. Make your variation, make your sponsored product, product targeting ad, and then make your sponsor display product targeting ad. So let me show you just the variations first. I'm not gonna show you how to make a variation. That's a super simple process that I don't really wanna take the time to do that. So let me jump over to my screen one last time, maybe one last time. <laughs> and I wanna show you just like the variations that we have first. So let me just show you eyelid wipes. All right, so you can see, this is the one we did earlier. I'm gonna open that up. But you can see we have a three pack, we have a three pack, we have a six pack. We haven't made a 12 pack quite yet, but I think we'll do that probably pretty soon. And then we were on this listing earlier. This is a sponsored display product targeting ad. This is one of my products. This is not my product, so I need to kick them off somehow. Mm. And then finally down here, you can see the frequently bought together right there. And those are my products as well, but this is what I'm talking about right here. So this is a product targeting ad. Mm -hmm. Excuse the baby real quick. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We were all babies at one point. Exactly. So these are all sponsored product, product targeting ads. And I'll go through a little bit of that just to show you how that were, or the difference between the two. Um, but you're seeing the placement right here. So mm -hmm. sponsored display, product targeting ad, sponsored product, product targeting ad. And so you can see the three pack, the three pack, the six pack the mm -hmm. three pack, the three pack. These are our products as well. All of these are our products, except for this one. That's our competitor. All of these are our products, except for this one and this one, which is our competitor. These guys are ruthless. They're our biggest competitor in our space and they bid like 30 bucks a click. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and so you can see that I have to do this mm -hmm. in order to get them to come out or mm -hmm. to make them spend more. That's another goal is just to make them spend more. So we'll just do that. We'll just do a little click there. Click on them too. <laughs> Don't worry, they're, they're pharmaceutical companies. They have plenty of money. They're not private sellers. I wouldn't do that if it was a private seller. These are both publicly traded companies and they're pharmaceutical companies. So, <laughs> Now, are you doing these variations as FBA or FBM? Exactly. Thank, great question. Great question. So they're FBM. Okay. Let me, um, let me show you. So that way you don't have to worry about creating inventory for it. Exactly. So you can see right here, um, ships from and sold by iLove. So we actually ship this from a warehouse. That way we don't have to bundle mm -hmm. these up. So they're still on the shelf individually. Mm -hmm. We get the order in. We do free shipping for these because it's such a big order. Mm -hmm. And then our warehouse bundles them in a six pack and then ships them out. Got it. So it's not necessarily to drive high sales. When you get the sales, it's great. It's more to create real estate to cover up some of those internal on the page uh, listings or then, on the page, you know, ad, ad inventory. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It looks like we get one sale every other day, which is still good. Yeah. Take, we take it. It's a hundred bucks. I mean, it's a hundred dollar product. So that yeah. profit margin is really high. Um, mm -hmm. 1300 revenue, but the goal is to just block our other listings. And then you can see here's sponsored display product targeting ads right there. Mm -hmm. both of our products and then frequently bought together we got both of those mm -hmm. that's weird this is frequently bought together with itself oh never mind i'm looking at it wrong but yeah bought together um and again there's our competitor again but most of these are our products right here and right here so th that's kind of the goal with it um and let me just show you briefly how to make one of these i'm going to show you both where sponsored product is and sponsored display I'm not going to go completely into it. Oops, wrong button. I'm not going to show you like naming or anything like that. So we're going to hit create campaign. Um, sponsored products is right here. Sponsored display is right here. Both are have product targeting ads, so make sure you do both of them. I like to do sponsored products first. And so I'm not going to name it or anything like that. Do a nice big daily budget manual targeting, dynamics bids down, 
Um, we're going to find that product real quick. So it's that six pack. Add it. And then you're going to do product targeting right here. We're going to do individual products. And then you can see there's, there's the product that we want to do. And you could even do some of your other products if you want. Shoot, even do it on your competitor if you want to get more aggressive. But the main one is your main listing that gets most of the sales. Mm -hmm. That's the one you want to protect. And so I'm going to protect that one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put $25 in. Mm. This is the key part, $25 right there. And then you'll hit launch campaign. Now, does this mean you're going to spend $25 every time there's a click? No, you're probably going to spend around $339 or maybe up to 728 or 653, but it's a high margin product. So you can afford to do that and it protects your listing during Q4. So let's go back and show you the sponsored display one. Pretty easy to make as well. Come into here, $100 a day budget. Let's find that product again. Uh, product targeting right there. Optimize for conversions. Default bid, $25. And then we're going to find this one. Actually, let's see if it's in the suggested again. Nope, not there again. So we're going to add, take this out, similar to advertised product. And then $25 bid. You can do your other ones too. So like we have a three pack in this variation. So we'll add that one in. But see, that's the, that's the normal cost of the click. But now mm -hmm. you're making it so your competitors can't pay 91 cents anymore. You're making it so your competition is going to have to pay $25. And then it's going to usually kick them off the, the listing completely as a result of that. So the more variations you can have, like I said, we're going to put the six pack or the 12 pack in eventually too. Mm -hmm. The more you have, the better space you have. And like I said, I didn't even mean for it to happen with this product, but it kind of happened perfectly. Like we wanted it to down here. <laughs> yeah. So just show you that in action. Does that all make sense? Yeah. So you're taking up as much real estate as possible. Um, the click through rates on those tend to be lower than they are like on search pages. So you're not leaving yourself up to a bunch of just random clicks. And I would venture to say, if somebody sees $99, they're disproportionately going to be the person that's looking to buy in quantity than someone else. Now you might just get curious people clicking, which might drive up some of your um, costs, but still like long range, I'm assuming these campaigns are still profitable. I don't track them. <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, usually they're very cheap. They're very, very, let's actually just, you know, for fun, live. I've never looked at them. Let's look at them. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but it's 100% defense. That's the only reason we do it. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to close all those and then I was going to want to get back into it. Oh. <laughs> all right. Let's go over that real quick. All right. Um, did it filter? Mind you, we, we just started some of these campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, so 12 clicks, average cost per click of 371, mm -hmm. two sales, but it looks like it, they didn't buy the actual six pack, they went back and bought oh, the gotcha. other one. And so the ACOS is 90%, but it's, it's doing a shop. It's protecting the listing. So they, they clicked on it, checked out the six pack, and then they went back and bought the one pack. Right. So you get the conversion within Amazon. Uh, your competitor doesn't get the, uh, the sale. So yeah, I, I, I still see that that's a valuable thing to do, especially in your space where you're, um, competitors are probably bidding higher. So you have to yep. bid higher to just get on there. Whereas someone who's not in a consumable probably doesn't even have to bid as high. Yep, exactly. So that's, that's kind of the goal of that, that strategy is just to keep them away from and off your listing. Right. 
And so we're kind of expanding that right now and getting more FBM listings. If you don't have a third-party warehouse that's at FBM for you, fulfillment by merchant, that's something you need to do now because Q4 is here and you're not going to get your stuff in in time. Trust me. They give you cutoff dates, but that doesn't matter. Just take matters into your own hands mm -hmm. and do it yourself. Well, and especially with the restock quantities, like that's that's still an unknown that I think a lot of people have no idea about because it's not yep. um, like it was last year where there wasn't restock quantity. So we don't know what they're going to do with that in Q4. Are they going to give us higher quantities or not? Yeah, exactly. Time will tell. All right, perfect. All right, so do we have time for, for the bonus? Let's do the bonus. All right. Let's see, here we go. So this is my wax on, wax off bonus, the secret weapon in Amazon PPC. Now I've gone in depth before in mm -hmm. your PPC summit in the spring on this strategy. So I'm gonna briefly cover it because it's so important in Q4 especially. And the exact strategy is Pareto's principle or the 80-20 rule. Pareto's principle applies to Amazon PPC. And what Pareto's principle states is that most things in life are not distributed evenly, but rather that 20% of your input creates 80% of your results. And that's true for your business. 20% of what you do in your business creates 80% of your results. So what would happen if you focus on that 20% and then delegated the rest of the stuff or automated it with software? How much would your business grow as a result? 20% of your team members, your employees produce 80% of your results. Focus on those team members, figure out what's going on with the other ones and you know, fix it. 20% of your customers create 80% of your revenue. What if you focused on those 20% of customers that create 80% of your revenue, make a VIP list, make really focus on them. And you'll make, you'll make a lot more money. You'll probably double your revenue. If you focus on that 20% of customers and then finally 20% of your products create 80% of your revenue. So during this time of Q4, stop worrying about all your stragglers. If you have 20 products, I guarantee four of them are making 80% of your revenue or making the majority of your revenue. So what if you just stopped worrying about the other 16 just for one quarter and only focus on those four and focus on accelerating those four? What would happen? And finally, in PPC terms, 20% of your search terms create 80% of your revenue. So everything is the 80-20. 20% of your products produce 80% of your revenue, 20% of your search terms in your Amazon PPC create most of your revenue. So what I like to remind people is find that 20%, which is your search term report again. Again, I have a video on that. You don't have to worry about, I'm not going to show you today, but if you go to profitablepineapple.com slash bonus, there is a video on find, pretty much downloading your search term report and analyzing it. But 20% of your search terms create 80% of your revenue. Keep that in mind and focus, focus on the best converting, best performing search terms in Amazon PPC, and it will scale and make your campaigns take off. So main action items for this one is find and scale those customer search terms. And I'll, I'm going to go back to my search term report. I know I already closed it, but let's go back to it real quick, just so I can show you what that looks like. It's October. There it is. All right, so I have a filter set on, which only has my 20%. So I'll get all my search terms in here. Select all. So let's look at this real quick. So what do we have there? We have 522 search terms right here. So these 522 search terms, when I first downloaded the search term report, actually, I think there's another filter on. There we go. Oh boy, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I think we have 522. Yeah, so 559 search terms or ASINs. So when I first downloaded this search term report, I had 18,000 search terms in here. And when I cut it down to the ones that are making sales, 559 total. So what if we just focused on the ones that are really converting? And you can see at the top here, these are the ones that are really converting well. And so what we do during fourth quarter is we focus on these and we scale them and we kind of shut off all the ones that aren't doing as much because we want to put more of the budget towards all these. So that's just a brief kind of showing of this, really focusing on the search terms that are bringing the sales and the products that are bringing the sales, especially during Q4. 
If you're in the healthcare space, you also want to do that for Q1. So really focusing on Q1 as well. All right, that's all I've got for you. So profitablepineapple.com forward slash bonus. My email is drtravis at profitablepineapple.com. I do have a free Amazon PPC course and an Amazon PPC mastermind at profitablepineapple.com as well. Um, Kevin, thanks for having me on. This has been great. And I hope your audience loves that the ninja hacks. I love the ninja hack, so I'm sure they will as well. I, I sure hope so. But yeah, I definitely confident. That was great. Uh, so I know folks are going to love it. So uh, if you want to get in touch with uh, Dr. Travis or get the bonuses, there will be links down below. So you don't have to worry about writing it down and typing it out later. You can just click the link down below to get that. So thank you for putting together another great presentation. So you definitely brought the goods. Appreciate All it right. a lot. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. This has been great. Amazon PPC may seem like a complex subject, but it doesn't have to be. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell to be notified whenever we come out with great brand building videos and videos on Amazon PPC.